Daily Mail. Yesterday, a tranche of UFO videos, including never-before-seen footage, has been quietly released by US Customs and Border Protection. Uh, ten videos that appear to show craft moving in weird ways uh, in our skies. The videos were released without warning, a press release or anything in the way of context, only to be discovered by UFO enthusiasts this week. The videos document a fighter jet pursued by an apparently baffling flying orb, as well as something that appears to be a propeller-powered hang glider and another apparently floating orb. Sorry, I'm covering my face here with my excitement, with my paper. Um, let's get on. A man I love having on the show, Rocky Elmore, former U.S. border um, patrol agent, uh, author of the book uh, Out on Foot, uh, which was all about weird happenings experienced by people like him on the U.S. borders, lonely, lonely places, everything from uh, so-called Bigfoot uh, to various other stuff and weird ghost tales. Uh, Rocky, thank you very much for coming on. This is kind of you to do this tonight. How are you doing? Thanks I'm, for having me. I'm good, Rocky. Um, I don't know if you've heard about this. What do you think the U.S. border force at this time of this great flurry of activity about UAPs, UFOs, whatever you want to call them, what do you think they were doing? Yeah, I, I don't know why they decided to release it now, you know, after uh, decades of everyone being afraid to say anything, if you see anything out of the ordinary UFOs, especially UFOs, and uh, all of a sudden now they're releasing things. Uh, oddly enough, the uh, now I, I didn't, uh, I had in the book out on foot, I only had one very brief a uh, paragraph or two about UFOs, and it was about a sighting. And I believe, uh, now I did not see the video myself, but from what I was told and from the video I saw yesterday, I'm quite sure that it was the Aguadilla, Aguadilla in 2013 down in Puerto Rico. And that is the one that matched up with what I was told. I wasn't able to go into it uh, in the book, because at that time uh, it was still uh, not really secret, but it was uh, somewhat classified. So I just left that out. And your colleague, you talked to me a lot about your colleagues and what they uh, recalled of various things that had happened to them, including ghosts. Did your colleagues talk to you about UFO, UAP sightings? You know, the whole time I was in, that was something that just almost never came up. The only, uh, the only other thing I had ever heard or seen about a UFO, and I'm quite sure it was fake, an agent had taken a picture with his cell phone of a UFO sitting on the ground in plain daylight. Mm. And it, it was so obvious that I don't think anyone believed it was real. Right. That was the only other thing about UFOs. You told me a story on my podcast, and uh, I recommend the podcast. Uh, it's at theunexplained.tv. We did a whole hour or more together. You told me a story about something that happened there, like a water hole, and you, I think, or some of you encountered what we might construe to be a Bigfoot. But there were weird aspects of that, that particular encounter that some might say were like alien, extraterrestrial. They were weird. They were strange. Right. Yeah, the whole encounter, and I had always been a little bit interested in Bigfoot growing up. And like everyone else, I thought, well, it's probably just uh, an overgrown monkey or ape, and somehow it survived in the woods for all these years, and nobody can just find it. But that night totally changed what I think about, uh, and, and I only say Bigfoot because I just don't know what other word to use for it. It, it could have been, I don't know, it could have been a, who, who knows what it could have been. could have been a Nephilim for all I know. Um, but... Yeah, it. Uh, when we had the encounter, it, it was dark, somewhat foggy, but we could see very clearly. And we were paralleling a creek, and we heard this big splash, just one big single splash hit the water. So we made our way over there. We stayed quiet. We got up to the edge, and uh, as we got to the water, there were about four or five coyotes that were just going up and down the uh, side of the creek bank and they were very quiet and usually when coyotes hear something they go off they're yapping and, and carrying on and making all kind of noise but this time they were very very quiet they made no noise no yaps no barking 
You could tell they were very nervous. They were staring into the water about where we heard the splash. We got up there. We couldn't see anything with the naked eye. So we turned on the lights, couldn't see anything with the lights. We started looking up and down the sides of the creek bank for some kind of a footprint. There were no footprints. There were no animal prints other than for the coyotes that were there. Uh, the coyotes them, themselves paid no attention to us. There were there was four of us. We walked right up in between them, uh, which is something we would have normally never did either. Uh, but they allowed us to walk right in between them. They didn't pay any attention to us. We didn't upset them. They weren't scared of us. They were scared of whatever was in the water. And nobody could see anything in the water. But we could hear very slight movement in it. And we looked and looked for quite some time and came up with nothing. So we went on about our patrol because we knew that a scope, a and this I think is important, it was a thermal scope that sees heat, not, not one that just magnifies the ambient light. It was one that dials in on heat. So it could see something that's not visible to the naked eye provided it's producing heat. And we knew that whatever was in the water was heading that way. And we knew it wasn't people because it was just a single splash, no thrashing of the water of somebody crossing over. So we gave, we just gave up on it, went about our patrol. And about maybe 15 to 20 minutes later, we started to hear some commotion down downstream from where we were, where this thing would have been heading. And it was where the thermal scope was set up. And there was a couple of agents, they were walking around and they were trying to work a, a large group of people that was coming down off the top of the mountain. They were getting set up and the supervisor that was running the thermal scope suddenly called them off, told them they needed to leave the area, get back in their rides and get out of there. And the two agents was totally oblivious to anything around them. Uh, they didn't hear anything around them. Uh, that was suspicious to them. Anything they heard, they just thought was the group coming down toward them. They didn't see anyone following them. And they were reluctant to leave and the supervisor had to repeat his order and more or less ordered them to get out of there and get back to their vehicles and leave the area. Right, so something That's something weird went on. I'm sorry that we're out of time now, Rocky. It's so good to, to actually see you and talk to you again. Um, one quick question, in the light of what we started this conversation with about those released videos and, you know, the, the strangeness, the incongruity of those being released by the US Border Agency, um, what is the climate like? What is the... What's the protocol? If when people report these things in the US border force, are they dealt with? Are they logged? Do people investigate them? Or do they not get investigated? Well, to my knowledge, that was the first time one was ever reported and talked about. Mm. Okay. Uh, the, the previous years I had been in, I had never heard of, of such a thing being reported. Mm -hmm. And there we see those videos. Uh, very strange that they should release those. I wonder if we'll get some uh, some answers at some point because you know I can't work that one out. You know, it's one of the many things in my life that I just can't understand why they did that, and then sort of left them hanging there for people to discover weeks and weeks later. Rocky, we're out of time. Thank you so much. Just talk to me about the book. How's it doing? Out on foot is the book. Uh, it's it's still going. It's been out for over nine years now, and it's it's still going. <laughs> right. We did a great conversation on my podcast. Check it out at theunexplained.tv. Rocky Elmore, thank you very much indeed. Rocky Elmore is a uh, retired U.S. Border Force agent. Uh, he's uh, from Oklahoma. He had a full career doing that and uh, has written about it in the book Out on Foot.